Okay, now we're gonna do the head. Okay, do me a favor. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please do. The uh, subscribe button is on the right hand side of this uh, video, the bottom right here, bottom right of the video. So if you have already subscribed, thank you and thank you for watching this video. So for the head, I'm going to start off by making a magic ring. I'm going to use two finger, make a cross over this side, turn to the back, grab, loop and yarn over to make a knot. So once you have a magic ring, you do eight single crochet into the ring. Oops. Eight single crochet into the ring. Pull this tight. Next row, we're gonna do increase. Increase means oh, let me get a marker. Increase means two single crochet in every stitch. So if you do not know where is the first stitch, you're not sure whether it should be here, here, or here. You look at the V shape here and count back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 This is the 8 It's here, the V shape So let me add a marker Let me pull this tight So I'm going to do two single crochet into this every stitch. So here two, two single crochet in one stitch is called an increase. So this is my second increase. Third increase. So since I have eight stitches started with eight stitches and now we're doing we're doing increase in all the stitch so which mean i should have 16 stitches in this row Let me just count just in case. Okay, 16 stitches. And now the next row. Next row, I'm going to do one single crochet before I increase. So do one single crochet. Add my marker and do increase increase means two single crochet into the same stitch so one single crochet increase should have 24 stitches in this row
find that if you use a smaller hook when you're doing amigurumi, the stitches is more. It looks better. They kind of like close together. So I should have 24 stitches in this row. So now I'm going to go to row four. Row four, I'm going to do two single crochet followed by an increase. So you're gonna do single crochet, single crochet, increase. One single crochet, two single crochet, increase. And you should have eight sets of it. And by the time you come back here, you should have 32 stitches. Okay, for row 5, row 5, I'm just going to do a single crochet all around. So, one single crochet in every stitch. So, you should have 32 stitches. So, for those who prefer to look at the written pattern instead of uh, following a video, I have the written pattern in my blog. And I'll share it in the description box below. So I'll come back to you once I'm at the end of the row. You should have 32 stitches. Okay, now for row 6. Row 6, I'm going to do increase. It's going to be 3 single crochet followed by an increase. So, 1... Two, three, follow by increase. So one, two, three, increase. One, two, three, increase. So you're gonna have eight sets of this, and by the time you come back here, you should have forty stitches. Okay, so row seven and row eight, I'm gonna do single crochet all around. So there's no increase or decrease, just uh, single crochet, one single crochet in every stitch for two rows for row 7 and row 8. Again, okay, now row 9, row 9, I'm going to do four single crochet followed by an increase. One, two, three, four, increase. So don't forget to add your marker on the first stitch. So you're going to do 8 sets of this, 4 single crochet followed by an increase. And so by the time you come back here, you should have 48 stitches. Now we are at row 10 and 11. Row 10 and 11, I'm going to do single crochet all around. So there's no increase or decrease, just one single crochet into every stitch. 2 rows of single crochet all around. Two rows, row 10 and row 11. Okay, now row 12. Row 12, I'm going to do five single crochet followed by an increase. Means one, two, three, four, five, increase. And you're going to do eight sets of this. One, two, three. Five and you do increase after eight sets, and you come back here. You should have 56 stitches. And now I'm gonna do two rows of single crochet all around. Uh, sorry, three rows actually. Row 13, 14, 15. So row 13, 14, and 15. You're gonna do a single crochet all around. No increase, no decrease. So which means every row you still have 56 stitches. In case you want to know which row you're at now, in case you got lost, you're not sure whether you did two or three rows of single crochet all around, look at the marker 
you go down to the magic ring here and start counting on the right side of the marker 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 so i have 15 rows this is row 15 you can see the line clearly so each line represent one row so from here you count up to here it's 15 but if from here you count until here before the marker i mean on the left side of the marker you will only get 14 which is one row less so always count the one on the right so now for row 16 i'm going to do decrease and start to do decrease so I'm going to do 5 single crochet followed by a decrease and you should do 8 sets of it. So this is 1 single crochet, 2 single crochet, 3, 4, 5. After 5 single crochet, do an invisible decrease or whichever decrease that you're comfortable with my invisible decrease is I'm going to use the front loop and the front loop I'm going to yarn over 2 and yarn over 2 this is one set so you're going to do 8 sets of it so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and do a 2 together make this 2 into 1 stitch so by the time you come back here to the marker, you should have 48 stitches. Okay, now for row 17, we're going to continue to do another row decrease. So this row, I'm going to do 4 single crochet followed by a decrease. And for those beginners who find it quite difficult to know which is the next stitch after your decrease, you can actually add a marker. It's like now, here. I'm going to do 4 single crochet followed by a decrease but as you see this one once we do a decrease this is taken but a lot of people I mean without a trained eye you might not notice that this is taken and you didn't start from here you start from here so in order not to make yourself confused maybe you can add marker all the way so like row 17 you're gonna do decrease four single crochet followed by a decrease so before you do any decrease or increase you can just see the V shape nicely this is the time you add your marker so this is one two three four and this is a decrease decrease means I'm gonna make this two become one so you take another marker this two does not count, so you count another one. One, two, three, four, and this is your decrease. And by the time you add your marker all around, you should have eight sets of it. So if you do not have eight sets, means somewhere is not right. Then you have to take a look at here, the starting point here. If you really open up here, you can see clearly that this is taken because of the decrease but when it's close together you might think that this is the next stitch so that's why for beginners you should add marker all around so that by the time you come here you should know the marker will tell you to do a decrease after the decrease do another four single crochet so you should have eight sets of it and in total you should have 40 stitches by the time you come to the starting point here so once i start here i should add a marker for those who add markers all around maybe you should add a double marker to remind yourself this is the starting point and not another in decrease so this is one two three four and when you see the marker two and invisible or whichever decrease is that you're comfortable with so after the decrease if in case you get confused again you're not sure whether to use this hole or this hole or this hole come back from the marker 
so you should have four stitches before you do a decrease so this one this is going to be a decrease so one two three four so meaning I should put my hook here and not here so for those who have done this many times and your eyes are trained you don't have to add marker but for those who are beginners never done amigurumi before and it's always not sure after a decrease or an increase where is the next where the next stitch should go whether it's here or here then you should start to add a marker so I'll come back to you once I'm at the end of the row and I should have uh, 40 stitches okay now next row row 18 I'm gonna do in a decrease again this time round it's gonna be chain 3 3 single crochet sorry not chain 3 yeah 3 single crochet so actually it's sing three sing single crochet in the next 3 sorry so 1 2 3 and you do a decrease so 1 2 3 decrease 1 2 3 decrease then you should have 8 sets of it and by the time you come back to this marker here you should have 32 stitches okay now at row 19 row 19 we're gonna do decrease we're gonna do two single crochet one two followed by a decrease so you're gonna do one two decrease one two decrease and by the time you come back here to the starting point you should have eight sets of it and you should have 24 stitches okay now i'm at the last row of decrease and also the last row this last row is going to be one single crochet followed by a decrease so it's gonna be single crochet and decrease So you're gonna have eight sets of it and by the time you come back here to the starting point here you should have 16 stitches which is just nice because the body I end with uh, 16 stitches as well so this time I'm gonna end with 16 stitches and this 16 I'm gonna sew on to the body so 16 and 16 so it's gonna be stitch by stitch okay this is uh, the safety eyes and safety nose if you do not have safety nose you can actually sew the nose so the eyes is uh, 12 to 13 row it's on the 12 to 13 row so from here you count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so between 12 and 13 and the gap is about 6 stitch apart and the nose will be in the middle of this eye so six means three somewhere here so now i'm gonna make the eyebrow for this eye cookie bunny has a very short eyebrow so since i have not had stuffing yet i might as well poke in from here Okay, is this too high? This will be too low. I guess I'll start from here. Is that too short? <laughs> this eyes is supposed to have a short eyebrow. looks about right don't you think okay so I should go to the back and tie a knot
is a uh, leftover yarn from my previous project. I'm not sure if I can have enough to go over to the other side. Oh, I tied too tight. Okay, let me get this up. If you tie too tight, just kind of move it about to make it come up. Should it go until here? Sometimes it's just so hard to decide. Okay, now let me try and do the other eye first. And we'll see how it goes. This one supposed to be in a triangle shape. I think it should come here. I have to follow the stitch so if I follow this stitch there's no stitch in the middle here so I put another one here and just go through and pull and it will look like this triangle like this but it look too thick then maybe I should take an I should make this thicker, right? <laughs> Let's see. You think this is triangle enough? Maybe I should pull there. Now it looks more triangle. And sometimes we can actually shape the. We can like make it plumb up or we can even squeeze it to make it more narrow so at least now it look more okay I do not have enough yarn here I should use another one so the balance I would just tie a knot the balance I would just tie a knot to the uh, whatever tail I have and leave it inside so this, since this side looks kind of too thick, I'll thicken this side. Okay, let me get another one. And this time I'm going to do the uh, mouth as well. I should thicken this side a bit. Okay, I'll leave the tail inside for sewing. I mean for tying a knot. Does it look better now? At least it's at par, right? I mean like this is thick and this should be thicker to make it look fierce. <laughs> Tangle. 
Oh. Pull a bit here. This should be a short eyebrow, but it should be as thick as well, so that it looks like visible. Just now it's too thin, it's like not so noticeable. So you can actually thicken it like this. Okay, now I should go down to the nose here. Let's see, because there's this uh, stopper here. I can't really go quite near. So this is the nearest I can go. Okay, from here. I'm going to go here. Here, it is kind of like truly trial and error. Like this. And one more. From here, I should come here, this side. So that when it turns, it goes underneath. your finger to kind of shape it around so that now one glance it does look like cookie bunny okay so now I'm going to cut the yarn I don't want it to be too long and I will tie a knot putting glue onto your amigurumi actually you can you can uh, add a bit of glue here so that this topper this uh, plastic thing will not come off because at times even though with this stopper after a while it does come off it breaks so now I think I would uh, make a few stitches here and there just to block it from coming off. If you can, you use glue. So if you see there's one line here, I would just purposely make another line here and here. So this yarn kind of hold it down. And let's check and see if there's any way I can stitch here. And make sure it's not visible to the front and make sure it's not too tight just go through all this to kind of hold it down so by the time I add stuffing it should hold it further 
I hope. <laughs> but of course not every eye, the stopper would break and come off. It just so happened I have uh, one of it, that the stopper just came off about a few months after I did the amigurumi. So I just, this is my way of just stopping it. it this, of course this might come off, but you know, I make a few stitches here and there, so chances of it coming off is a little bit slim. So make sure just go through um, a few stitches and make sure those stitches will kind of go through that plastic thing. And make sure wherever you make the stitch, it does not show in front and it does not affect your sewing in front. So do not pull too tight, just a few stitches here and there, so that you can just hold it, that's all. So if you want, you can just add glue here, a bit of a glue before you press down the plastic lock for the eyes and the nose. This is just my silly way of doing it. Since I have yarn, and since I'm going to sew the nose, I mean the eyebrow and the mouth and all, so I might as well take a few stitches here and there, and make sure it's not too tight. Just find any tail left, and you just tie a knot. So after this, I'm going to sew the ear. Okay, make sure you push it back and take a look at it and see if everything is okay. Now I'm going to add the ear first before I add stuffing. So it's up to you for those who think you prefer to sew the ear after stuffing and you go ahead so the right ear should be bent so it should be around here right above right above this eye so normally what i do is i'll just uh, make one stitch to make it whole okay here here somewhere here since you know that ear is going to be here and check first you your trick come from here you do one more stitch here so it's kind of like hold it in place and then you take a look and see if this is where you want it to be if this is where you want it to be now you continue to stitch the rest because it's kind of hold it place you kind of hold it down for you now you start to stitch so there's no fixed rule to this if you think that you would prefer to stitch after you do stuffing after you add stuffing then you then you don't stitch now you stitch after stuffing mm. 
make sure I do a few stitches to make it hold firmly so it stay firm. I'm not sure about you but I prefer to sew if possible. Sometimes I do forget and I'll add stuffing and I'll seal the neck before I <laughs> so up to you. So this ear is going to bend. So down here I'm gonna stitch like this so that here it's flat and it will bend anytime. I'm not going to curl it. As for this ear, I'm going to curl it a bit. I'm going to curl it a bit so that it will always stay upright. It got no chance to bend. Whereas this one here, it's flat. Here, I'm going to sew it a little bit like this. Make this go in a bit. So here, the top part there's no chance to bend. It will always stay upright. Not so much, just a bit. Where else here is flat. I make sure I sew it flat so that it can bend anytime. So I'll come back to you once I have this secured nicely. Okay, this is how it look like. So I'm not going to make one stitch here because I've been bending it for so long. <laughs> It kind of stay bent. <laughs> so now I show you how it looked like on the inside on the uh, plastic locker, the plastic lock on the uh, safety eyes and safety nose. Because when I sew the ear, I would have some tail left. This ear also some tail left, the eyebrow, the mouth. So I make a few crisscross here. make a few stitches onto the body at uh, the head here and then pull this black yarn down so this black yarn will never come off see it won't come off so it kind of like hold the plastic thing down so it's like here I make a few crisscross with the tail because I have some balance yarn from the ear and just uh, Pull the black yarn because that's not the black yarn. I make a few rounds here to stop it, but it will come off eventually. So I purposely use this pink one to go through here so that it won't come off. So you just make a few crisscross and you make sure this yarn cannot move, cannot go anywhere. It will kind of stop the stopper from coming off. So this is how it looked like. So now I'm gonna add stuffing. Stuff it, plumb it out nicely and use your hand to shape it, shape it around and I'm going to sew the hand later on. Because if you don't plumb the head nicely, it might, it might sink in certain part and might not look nice. So make sure you add quite a lot to plumb it up. If not, your cookie bunny might not look cute anymore. Okay, so you plumb it up. And you shape it around with your hand. And see if any part is going to sink in. You know, sometimes you don't have enough stuffing. Here might sink in, here might sink in. So plumb it up nicely. And even when we are going to sew it onto the body halfway, we can still add a bit more. If you do not want to add too much now, you can add some more while you're sewing. Okay, I plumb up the head. It does look like cookie bunny. And now I'm going to sew the hand onto the body before I add stuffing 
So you make sure when you add the head, you know where's the tail. I have uh, extra yarn here on the body for the sewing to the head. So for the hand, it's kind of simple because uh, it doesn't really matter how you sew it. Where you're gonna sew it doesn't really matter because it's a kind of round hand. So I just connect it here like this. Somewhere here, just make a stitch on top here. Make a few stitches, make very sure it stays, it does not come off easily. And later on this tail, you can tie with the tail of the other hand. And make sure you are slightly below so that you can still see this V shape here to sew the head on. You think it is tight enough? sure that her hand is nicely secured and you can just slip the tail there and tie a knot with the other tail later on or you can uh, wait, let me add let me add one more stitch here here and this particular hand I'm going to add a microphone and uh, the uh, video for this microphone is in another post I'll share in the description box below so this microphone okay let me see I have this secured so I just make a few stitches down here first to kind of lock it. And later I'm going to tie a knot to the other side. Okay, so it kind of stayed locked this way for the time being. Okay, now I'm going to sew the microphone onto the hand. Now this would be a tricky part because this microphone is in grey colour and the hand is in pink. So, I'll make sure I just make one or two stitches here. Let me see, okay. And make a few more stitches so that it stays firm and not twist about. And let me see. Add one more. Make sure I'll I'll make sure I go back to the same stitch so that not so much of the grey is visible does it look okay if the microphone is this way or this way it's alright I can shape it around later on let's make a few stitches here and there and make sure here it does not really show so much of the grey. 
and let me see maybe I can make one more stitch and another make sure those stitch you can actually hide it properly so that one glance you do not see grays gray color smear on the hand like it looks so like a stitch at least now it look more like it's really holding a microphone right the written pattern is in my blog if you prefer to have the written pattern I will share it in the description box below and if you have not subscribed to my channel please do it's on the uh, right hand corner of this video the bottom right okay let me make a few more stitches because this one is like hanging at the edge here you can come off anytime right okay i'll just poke it here under the arm I think this is firm enough okay from here I'll go it inside the body so that you can't see any gray and I'll tie a knot with this pink Okay, just want to show you how I'm doing the microphone part. And now I'm gonna sew the other hand. I'll have it stuff up plum. I'll plumb it up with stuffing later on and I'll come back and show you how I'm gonna sew the head to the body. Okay, now I'm gonna connect the head to the body. I add stuffing, make sure to plumb it up. And here when you wanna plumb it up, you make sure you place your finger and push the stuffing onto the tip here that tip of the leg if not this part will be kind of not plumb up so make sure you push all the stuffing down here and then you add more you can add more later because it might it might uh, interfere with your sewing so later when you're halfway through you can add more so here I plumb it up. I just want to show you when you attach the head, you make sure where's the tail. Don't attach wrongly. And my last stitch on the head ends here. But I do not want to start sewing from the back because I can't see whether the head is on the right place. So I'm going to make one stitch here. I'm gonna come to the front. I'm gonna come to the front and start stitching from the front. Okay, I'm gonna make one stitch because I have 16 stitches on the head and also 16 stitches on the body. So each head, each stitch, you make one, you sew once on each stitch. Okay, this is just a hold it to make sure this is the right spot. We think this is right. Hold it and start sewing. I'm not sure if you can see this, but you just make sure every stitch because you have 16 stitches here on the head and 16 on the body so it's gonna be stitch by stitch and you won't miss it so I would prefer to do two rounds of it so that the head is really secure 
See, one on the body, one on the head. And before you can continue, you just take a look and see if this is the right spot. If this is the right spot, then you continue. So for those who want to stop watching from here on, thank you for watching. And if you have not subscribed, please do. And I'll see you in my next post. But at the end of the video, I'm still going to show you how the uh, finished product look like. And how cute it would be. <laughs> so I'll come back to you after I uh, do two rounds of sewing on the head to make sure it is uh, firmly attached to the body. Okay, this is how the finished product look like. Isn't it cute? Yeah, and the ears still remain bent. I did not make a stitch. You see, it will still kind of bend because if you bend it long enough, it will stay. This is the microphone. You can actually uh, shape it around. You can go down. You can come up. You can go sideways like this. It looks more like a drumstick, right? So thank you for watching. Hope you like this video. Hope it does help you make this cute bunny, cookie bunny. And I'll see you in my next post.